So we're kicking things right off. The first thing we're gonna be doing is creating a DIY focused assist string. And once we have everything required, the first thing we'll need to do is measure the circumference of our lens for the inner circle. The outer circle can be about two or three centimeters larger than the inner one. We then can cut out the ring and fit it to the front of our lens. Now we're gonna fold a little piece of tape in on itself and stick it to the focus ring of our lens. Next, grab a piece of colored tape and stick it to the back of the cardboard ring. We're then going to grab a pen or pencil and create a marker on each tab for your desired start and end focus point. We can now use these markers as guidelines to switch focus from one object to another quickly in our scene. So now I like to call this one the super smooth free fall. All we're gonna need is a really soft surface, a camera that can shoot in slow motion, and a subject to drop. Once we have these in place, the trick is to hold your camera and the subject as high as you possibly can, dropping them onto the nice soft surface below at exactly the same time. When we finally have our clip, we can slow it down even further in Premiere by selecting speed duration, putting in our desired percentage, and then selecting optical flow. So what we're gonna be doing for this one is we're gonna be faking an anamorphic look with a DIY lens filter and some editing magic. I've created some anamorphic templates for you to download and cut out yourself. The link for them is down in the description. Once you've made the cutout, grab a piece of tape and stick it to the back and front of your filter. Now stick either some fishing line or hair tautly across the face of the filter. And simple as that, your filter is now completed. You can use this filter either as it is, or if you'd like to take your anamorphic look to the next level, we can apply some extra effects in the editing room. So the first thing we're gonna do is drop our design clip into a new project in Premiere, create a sequence, and with our sequence selected, come up to the sequence settings. We are now going to change our resolution so it fits a 2.39 to one aspect ratio. I've linked the chart below in the description so you can find out what resolution it is that you need to enter into the second field. For full HD, you need to change this value to 803 pixels. Anyway, now that our footage is converted to an anamorphic aspect ratio, we need to apply some distortion. To do this first, right click on our clip and select replace with After Effects composition. Once in After Effects, we're going to come over to the Effects tab, search for the Bezier Warp effect and apply it to our clip. In the Effect Controls panel, select Bezier Warp. To add the distortion, I'm going to be warping the top and bottom vertexes to appear just outside of my clip's border, as well as bringing the tangent down to match the curve at the bottom so my distortion happens evenly around my center object. I'm only changing the tangent position because I changed the position of my footage earlier in Premiere. Once we're happy, we can then save our file and close After Effects. We should now have a pretty decent fake anamorphic look. Nice. So this is my desired frame and this is the room we are filming in. As you can see, it's super bright and super airy and that works for some scenarios, but not for the scene I want to create. First, all we need to do is flag off the window on the right with a black sheet. And after that, we're gonna open up the curtain on the left so we can get a brighter source of light to contrast with the darkness we have just created on the right side of the frame. Now, if we take a look at the same scene from earlier, you can really see just how much of a difference it has made to change the mood and emotion of the scene. Anyway, this one is definitely the simplest on here. So actually all we're gonna need is a see-through plastic bag and a rubber band. Now all we need to do is just put our camera into the bag, put the lens facing towards the opening and use the rubber band around the front of the lens to keep the bag from coming loose. So last but not least, we are going to be using our gimbal in FPV mode. So moving on, the first thing we're going to do is balance our gimbal. Make sure your gimbal is balanced perfectly, guys. Seriously, if it's not, it will tweak out when you tilt your horizon and you won't be able to achieve a stable FPV effect. Once you're sure it's balanced well, power it on and connect your Ronin to the app on your cell phone. You can then head over to user profiles and right there you'll see the option to switch to FPV. Here are my current settings on the screen right now. Feel free to copy them, just play around. And now maybe 
just maybe you'll have a chance to look as cool as this guy does.